Welcome back to the channel. I'm so excited to finally get started on Cookie Monster. Now to get you guys up to date with what I'm thinking with this truck. Yes, I'm gonna completely blow it apart and redo it. I know it looks really super nice, but I want this truck to really be on the same level as the Dually. I want to get everything working 100% before I take it apart because I don't want to get the truck freshly painted and have all of this nice work done and then have to go in and do basic things like motor work and fixing leaks and all that stuff. So the first step on this truck today is to take it to the transmission shop. There's a couple of things I found I wanna show you and the transmission was run out of fluid prior to me taking ownership and it may have been driven on a little bit. So I want the transmission shop to do a full inspection, reseal the pan that's leaking like crazy and let me show you what else I found. So the first thing that I noticed right off the bat was this switch. So apparently the shop that installed the brand new Phoenix transmission is supposed to install a ground relay. Now I'm told that the ground relay is supposed to activate your overdrive. So instead of installing the ground relay, so it's an automated system, they decided to install a switch on the shifter. And when you're driving over 50 miles an hour, you're supposed to activate the switch so you can go into overdrive. And when you're driving under 50, you deactivate the switch. So we're gonna have the shop take a look at that because I have no idea what that's supposed to look like. Now we gotta go under the hood. So remember how the truck was driving real sluggish on the test drive? Well, I uh, hooked my peepers on the old TV cable. I was also doing an underhood inspection and these are some bolts for the intake manifold that are not even remotely close to being tight. These are the ports for the transmission cooler lines to go in that's in the radiator. So I think we're gonna have those hooked up. Now, if I was facing one or two of those issues, I'd be more than happy to tackle this on my own, but I really want the transmission inspected and I figured while it's getting inspected, I might as well just have them take a look at everything else. It's also a time factor too. I still have the dually I'm working on. I got the C10 in the garage I'm doing work on. So I don't necessarily have all the time in the world to be able to diagnose and fix everything on the truck just yet. So let's put this thing on a trailer. Just made it to Hometown Auto Service in South Daytona. Now, he doesn't know what he's gonna do to the truck yet. So uh, today we're just dropping it off. Hopefully he'll be able to schedule it, but I uh, really wanna get this thing on the road. So let's get it off the trailer, get it over to him and see if we can chat with him about this truck. Riding in the diesel over here, I heard a <laughs> when I hit the brakes. So, uh, that tells me my uh, brake booster is starting to go bad. So added some sketchiness to the drive. Looks like I got another project to add to the channel. Getting ready to pull out the ramps and notice my uh, trim piece is missing. I was like, what the hell? Let's go see Mr. Joe. See the truck, it just runs really good. That's neat. Well, that's pretty sweet. It's convertible too. Here's that blazer. Looks like a respray. Jam looks a little white there, but it's a pretty decent job. Just needs to be polished. All right, guys, here with Joe at Hometown Auto Service and he just did a quick inspection on the truck. So what do we got, man? Yeah, so here, this here for your TV cable. Oh yeah. That, that's not going to work. So what I'm gonna want you to do is you're gonna have to get some uh, parts here. None of this is gonna work out right now, so really can't really drive the truck until you get that. Yeah, fixed. yeah. So. Now we're gonna pull it into the shop and put it up in the air. Sure does look good. Just got the truck on the rack, getting a look for the first time. So it's leaking motor oil and transmission oil pretty bad or at least right there but yeah, then it's, it's, it's right there it's leaking, it's leaking at the valve cover too okay uh, but as bad as it's leaking we should be able to start it and, and see it coming out oh uh, you know <laughs> yeah yeah it's gonna need the cooler line to drive it 
Do you want me to order those or is that something you guys want to do? You know, if, if these trucks are pretty popular. Yeah. If they have some pre-vent ones that say they fit this truck. Yeah. That would be quite nice. Okay. Um, I can bend them from scratch. Right. But you're going to be paying more for the time than if you could find a set. Right. Ready to go. We did spend some money on some good stuff. It just needs to be yeah. cleaned up. That's all. They've been driving it with that throttle cable off. Yeah. So that thing is not giving it all the pressure. Right. Hopefully the transmission has the fail safe ball in place, which a lot of builders do not put it in place. Okay. Without it in place, you can definitely take transmission damage on. Okay. With it in place, with, with it in place, it gives you a fighting chance. Right. Um, uh, uh, but I'll, I'll find that out later. Okay. We got first thing first is the uh, the cooler lines and the TV table. Right. Then I can drive it, and then I'll see how it's working. Right. Then I'll pull the pan. Gotcha. And if the pan doesn't have a lot of soot, like they burned the clutch or did something like that, That's operating cool, it like this. Yeah. Then we'll get locked up working, and you'll run it. Perfect. That's what I want to do, man. Just want to get it driving. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the truck is back on the trailer and I got an appointment scheduled for six weeks out. Kind of bummed. I was really hoping I could get in sooner, but I get it. It gives me time to do some stuff to the truck to get it ready for them. Don't mind my droopy headliner here. I know I got to redo it, but man, when he said, do not drive this truck, I was really surprised. It seems like most of the work done to the truck was pretty nice. And some parts were, they need to be touched up and gone through, but for him to say, don't drive the truck, I was I was really shocked. And I don't know if the shop that installed the transmission uh, just wasn't knowledgeable in how 700 R4s work or what what's required to make them operate properly. So it really sucks because I, uh, I knew I was getting into a project, but I didn't expect to hear the news of potentially having to buy another transmission. Well, I just pulled the valve cover and uh, first, these bolts were torqued to like 30, at least 30 foot pounds, way too tight, <laughs> way, way too tight. The, uh, the gasket was well, rubber, but it's torn. They tore right through it. And here it wasn't even on. See how these are all, all damaged? That, just, that was just nicked. So, so this wasn't even sitting on the head. This was just, it was sitting inside and the engine was running with this gasket right next to it. Just loosen this up. <laughs> it does not have to be that tight. All right. See, that's good. That one was pretty good. I think what they ended up doing was just cranking down on these bolts because they knew there was an oil leak. So instead of removing the valve cover and inspecting it, they just tightened the ever living, you know what, out of those bolts. And you might be wondering about these old uh, tubes on the headers here. Well, these are uh, 50 state legal headers, but uh, I live in Florida, so we can just bzzz. Okay, well, this one looked like it was on properly. Taking a peek at these uh, valve springs here. They're uh, of the dual variety, which is pretty cool. Found some uh, material, gasket material, kind of just worked its way in here. Just blew out the, uh, the valve train here. Got that crap out of there. Got it all over the engine bay, which I don't really care about because uh, this is all coming apart anyway, but I did get some on the dually, so that sucks. When I was over here and I noticed, uh, we're gonna have to replace this master cylinder too, because this is leaking. The steering's gonna have to be rebuilt. Also, what I was looking at was this, uh, the fuel line, right? So the fuel line, I saw the fuel pump when he put the truck up in the air, it's on this side. I see it running down the frame right here. It goes up to the, the front cross member, goes over, comes up over here to the uh, fuel pressure regulator, 
then it comes over and hooks up to the front of the fuel rail. And this is that Holly, uh, excuse me, Edelbrock direct port fuel injection. So each port has an injector, which is really cool. It has a crossover in the back. You can kind of see it right here. So I'm wondering why didn't they just put the crossover up front here and then move all this over here because your fuel line's right there. And instead of crossing under the, and going up, just come up and hook up in the back. You know, something else you could do to help with uh, oil leaking other than, you know, using the right gaskets and making sure the gaskets are on the uh, mating surface is uh, if you got these chrome valve covers, which I do not like, just rough them up with some uh, Scotch-Brite. Tighten these intake manifold bolts down too before I get too far into this. Keep in mind you're go... That's why it's loose. They stripped the threads out. As soon as it grabbed, it just let go. Wow. Wow. What about this one? Well, that's why the bolts are loose because there's no threads holding it in place. Great. <clears throat> and I got people asking me why I want to redo this truck. Why would, uh, why would you try to fix that? You know, that's silly. Let's just uh, strip the bolts out of the heads, the aluminum heads on our new motor and uh, just don't tell the customer and send it. I don't have, I don't have, uh, I don't have anything nice to say about that one, fellas. And fellettes, I think y'all can understand the, the, as a consumer, you know, th this was, uh, this was work that was done and paid for by somebody. Um, and, you know, when somebody goes and spends What's this motor cost? $4,500 for this, for this engine? And they go in and put on this $2,500 EFI kit and then strip a bolt into, into one of the heads and just, just don't say anything? Again, I don't know the circumstances. I don't know what was said. I don't know the conversation. I just know I, I'm here to make it right. You know, I'm really, I'm really fighting the urge to not blow this whole truck apart like starting right now. It's like every time I look at it, it's just like I find more stuff. Also, <clears throat> the torque specs on these valve covers are not 35 foot pounds, they're six. So <clears throat> just keep that in mind when you're putting these valve covers on. I actually got a, uh, a new torque wrench to do this. It's this uh, Kriftsmane. It's a high-end uh, high tool. So you just uh, click, click just like that. Click, click. Oh, that was it. We'll fire this truck up and let it run for a minute, see if it leaks. This truck has a tendency to pop into reverse, so I just put some chucks down. Got some oil burning off the headers. We just might have stopped that one. We'll let it come up to operating temp and check back in a little bit. Well, we got the valve covers fixed, which is awesome. Found a massive leak in the AC compressor. And just, just keep adding parts to the list, man. There's just more things I found. We're not gonna dive into it yet. I do want to apologize for today's video. It was kind of a bust. I took the truck to the transmission shop. They said, hey man, don't drive it. Order these parts, come back in six weeks. Sometimes it's just how these projects go. It takes forever to get them up and running. I thought for sure it was gonna be a quick fix, maybe just you know fix the TV cable, do an inspection and service the trans and I'll be up and running, but it's gonna be a little bit deeper than that. We wanna make sure everything's 100% before we start driving it, and then I can get to the diagnostics and repairs of any other systems in the truck. And if you're liking this content, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, you're a freaking awesome human being. I love working on old stuff like this, sharing it with you guys, and taking them on road trips, and meeting you fine guys and gals all over 
the country. But that's gonna do it for me on this one. I really appreciate y'all watching. I'll see you in the next video.